Hey everyone, thought I'd show you what I've been working on today. This is a project for my dad's uh, Wurlitzer Model 1015 jukebox. Inside the jukebox there's one of these color tubes on each side of the jukebox and uh, when this is running there's a fluorescent tube that's installed in each one of these color tubes. So as the color tube spins around uh, the color that's shown out through the front of the jukebox changes. Uh, the trick is that you want both wheels synchronized so that both sides of the jukebox are uh, showing the same color change and they counter rotate so that the colors uh, change from outside in or inside out, your choice. But you want it to be symmetric and matched. So originally uh, Wurlitzer used a clock motor like this and their thinking was that the clock motor would always be synchronous with the 60 hertz line current going in there and everything would be fine. But actually it didn't turn out to be the case. Apparently the amount of uh, torque it takes to rotate one of these, even though it's very low, is enough to make the clock motor not run synchronously. So what happens is, is one inevitably goes faster than the other, and then the colors get out of sync. The first challenge was finding a motor that I could interface to the existing uh, mechanics. So I found, luckily found, a nylon gear uh, at McMaster that had the same pitch that these guys used, and uh, was managed to press that onto a gear motor that I bought from Jameco, and then fit the whole thing into the existing mechanical assembly without uh, having to cut anything original. So since this is a, you know, an antique collector's item, I didn't really want to drill into the existing brackets. And this motor mounts just by clamping onto the existing frame. I didn't have to drill any new holes. These gear motors are very low power. Uh, I think stalled, they only take maybe 100 milliamps or something at, at 6 volts maximum. Uh, but they have more than enough torque to drive these and with the gearing I figured out that right in the middle of their speed range, right at about 3 volts, they were driving the speed of the color wheels at the original speed, the target speed. So I figured with you know, double the amount of, of speed uh, available I, I would have plenty for the control to be able to um, synchronize the two wheels. The controller is uh, just an Arduino with a SparkFun add-on shield and the motor drivers are just simple PN2222A transistors. I didn't really bother smoothing anything out. Uh, I did configure the Arduino to run the motor PWM at about 20 or 30 kilohertz or whatever the maximum is and just sent that straight into the motors. And you, I, I can't hear them whistle at all so I, I assumed it's fine. For the sensors I just used a piece of an old mouse circuit board and originally these detectors were two channels since they were decoding quadrature signals but I just wired them together in parallel for this project. So as you can see the two wheels are rotating nicely in phase. So let me just introduce a, uh, a phase error. So on the bottom of these there's four little pins and if I pick it up and put it back down I'll get a 90 degree phase error. So now you can see that the uh, two are out of phase. And if you look at the output you can see that it's noticed that uh, this guy is now lagging. So it's sped up the speed of this motor and hopefully it'll catch up in about two rotations. So there, it actually, so it overshot slightly. So this, this guy is actually now leading. And uh, you can see the control dipped just below the, um, the median, sort of the average speed. It's still slightly high, so I have a few more parameters to tune in there. But as you can see, it works pretty well. And for, for synchronizing the color wheels like this, it's not exactly a super high precision PID loop type thing. So the way this works is it's essentially a phase-locked loop where the, this cylinder is the master frequency and this guy is the slave frequency. So the opto uh, sensors are used on both of these to determine the phase difference between them. And then the phase difference is um, sent through a PI control loop and the output from that is used to drive the speed of, of the slave motor. Let's try a bigger phase disturbance this time. So if I pick this up and let it roll uh, past 90 to 180, uh, let's see how long it takes that to uh, regain itself. Okay, see you next time. Bye.